Hi, this is Akiva from Twisted Tree Farm, and I'm out here in the back of the house grafting some apple trees. And I thought I'd show you guys how uh, uh, the process goes. Uh, this is whip and tongue. There's many different ways to graft trees, but basically you're taking uh, rootstock and a scion, uh, or you know, just a cutting of a cultivated variety, and you're joining them together. It's very hard to root apple shoots, but it's not hard to graft them, and so. Uh, all you're trying to do is uh, line up the cambium, the inner bark, with the inner bark of the of the uh, rootstock, and so you put those two together, and they'll form a union. And the way it works is when you make a cut on a tree, it, it makes a callus, right? So if you ever cut a branch off of a tree, and it healed properly, this thick uh, ring of callus tissue will form around the cut. And when that callus tissue is forming, it's very sensitive. And when the callus tissue is forming on the rootstock and it's forming on the scion and they're pressed against each other, they're going to unionize. They're going to become one. And it's a, really an incredible process. So, uh, anyway, I got a bucket of rootstocks down here. And uh, these are uh, rooted layers. I have another video on, on how to grow your own rootstocks. Um, anyways, so I got my rootstock here. And uh, this is uh, Bud 118, it's a Russian rootstock doesn't really matter. Um, anyways, so with whip and tongue, it's the best graft union possible. It's the strongest, uh, most awesome graft union, I think. Uh, but it's the most difficult to cut. And you can cut yourself, so I'll talk about how to avoid that. Um, but first, let's do the cuts, since I have this tree out here. Um, so what I do is I, uh, is I, as I hold my knife like this, you can see it's, this is a, a budding knife. Uh, I'm left-handed, and they don't really make uh, very many left-handed grafting knives. So I use a budding knife, which is uh, beveled on two sides. Um, but it's just a very, very sharp knife. It's wicked sharp. It's it's like a razor, um, like a fresh razor, you know? Um, and it takes a bit of strength to make a good cut. You're making a slash. What you don't want is to whittle it, you know? You don't want a bunch of bumps and divots. You want one clean cut. And uh, so I find that I can do it best by holding the close to my chest or my solar plex, and then I use my my shoulders my back to make the to for the muscles right and so i hold it up there and then that's it super quick got a nice long cut there very uh clean nice slope and then so that's the whip and then i'm gonna make the tongue and the tongue what i do is uh i'm putting my my two thumbs together right on the cut and i'm gonna start about a third of the way down from my cut and I'm gonna make a little uh, slice into the wood about halfway down. So I'm starting from the top quarter or third and I'm going to about the middle. And what I do is I put my thumbs together and I rotate. See that? I just pull the knife through the wood. I'm not pushing it straight down. I'm not trying to split it. I'm just trying to make a little notch here. So I'm gonna put it through and it takes a little bit of practice. But I'm just I'm just pulling it through, and that's it. Just a little notch, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on my cutting. So here's a here's a nice uh, shoot, nice and straight, not a bunch of branches. This is one vigorous uh, last year's growth. This is uh, Liberty Apple, by the way. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Make my whip, get that nice whip, and then I'm gonna make my little tongue here. And it takes a lot of practice. Um, I would say I wasn't really good at grafting trees until I'd done a thousand or so. Um, but uh, it's pretty fun once you get it. And then, so you got, they each got their cuts, and then they just slide in together because of that notch. And uh, that one is a little messy. I'll do another one. But, uh, but basically, they're uh, joined together, and sometimes there's overlap that's okay as long as there's good cambium contact in the middle and uh, I'll do a, a better one so you can see the cut better what, how it's supposed to line up and then uh, this is uh, grafting tape or parafilm some people use ba bands doesn't matter all you want to do is have it sealed up and and uh, held together the cuts themselves are actually pretty strong it won't fall out very easily at all um, so the parafilm stretches so I just take a little piece this is almost too long actually and uh, just stretch it real tight 
keep it tight the whole time. And parafilm's nice, it sticks to itself and it breaks down in the sunlight. It lasts for about a year or so. And then this is way too long, right? This is gonna draw a ton of water. It's also, uh, while the graft union is forming, this is it's too much leverage, right? If a bird lands on this or something. So I just cut to one or two buds. Um, and I always keep everything in water. I don't know, you can't really see, but the cuttings are in water and the rootstocks are also gonna be placed in water. Um, so there it is all taped up and then the end, to just to keep the moisture in, on such a short cutting, I just uh, I dip, dip it in some hot beeswax that I have on the wood stove over here. And then I take my tree, put it in a bucket of water, um, and I, I pack them into big pots of uh, sawdust in the basement and, until it's spring. So this, this is winter right now, and uh, I'll go back in uh, May and I'll plant these I'll plant all these grafts out in the nursery, um, you know, when I'm not too worried about deep freezes anymore. And uh, they'll grow all summer, and then I'll, I'll dig them up and either sell them or grow them on my hill. So let's do another one. So I'm starting real close to my chest. I got my thumb up, and um, it's just a nice decisive slash. You want to kind of be very intent on what you're doing. You're kind of like a, like a samurai. You're not like, oh, should I cut this? You just slash that thing open, right? And then make my whip, so you can see, but just a nice little notch. Don't go too far in. And here's my cutting. Do the same thing. Hopefully this shows up on the camera okay when we put them together. Um, I always tape my thumb. Sometimes when I do that whip, the knife just barely touches my thumb, and just a little scratch from that, it, it can hurt. And uh, especially if you're doing hundreds of trees in a day. Um, and then I always, on my non-knife hand, I wear a, a glove. Uh, a lot of people don't wear gloves. They wear tape, whatever. I've cut myself too many times. I've had stitches. Uh, I wear a glove. The glove is a Kevlar glove. It's like, like a chef's glove. You can get it from any place that sells like kitchen supplies. Um, so then I'm just going to put the trees together. And they just kind of slide right in. And sometimes this will happen, the, the bark gets like uh, a little rubbed off, I don't know if you can see that. But that's actually, I've found that they still heal just fine, and I'll just kind of put it back. And, um, and I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's pretty solid. And like again, I got it, it went a little too far on both sides, I actually don't worry about that, as long as there's good contact in the middle. Anywhere where there's good contact, it's going to form that callus tissue and they're going to form together and uh, it'll, it'll be nice and strong. And sometimes the cutting is too skinny and the rootstock is uh, pretty thick and it doesn't matter. You just line it up on one side. As long as it's lined up on one side, what you don't want to do is put it in the middle and have the cutting have no contact on either side of the rootstock's uh, bark. So you want them nice and lined up, nice tight tape. and. When I was learning to graft, I didn't start by working on trees. Uh, I started by working just with cuttings. I'll just take a bunch of shoots from some wild apple tree and uh, start trying to splice them together. And that way, if you're uh, messing up when you're learning, you're not ruining your trees, right? I think I'll do, I'll do one more just to make sure it's clear. Um, but yeah, practice, 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 and once you feel comfortable with the trees you're you're cutting, then you can move on to to doing real trees. So make that cut. And it takes a lot of practice, but uh, once you get good at it, it's it's effortless. You don't have to think about it, and it's a great skill to have to be able to graft your own fruit trees. It's a good way to make a living. It's a good way to just add awesome trees to the world. This, this bark keeps slipping off. So it's hard to show you guys a really nice picture. I have pictures on our uh, either Facebook page or website or something like that of really good whipping tongues where they fit together perfectly. Um, but these will these will form. I usually get about 90 
95% take on apples. Apples are one of the most forgiving trees. And that's one thing I should talk about really quick, is the temperature. You don't want to let these freeze, really. You want them to keep... So callus tissue can form below freezing on some species, uh, especially apple, but it's, uh, it's easier for it to form if you keep it like, you know, 35, 40 degrees, um, which is like an unheated garage or a, a basement or something like that, where it doesn't get too cold and, and they'll form well. And that's with apples. Now, peaches is a totally different story. Peaches won't callus very well if it's, you know, below 60 degrees. Walnuts can be like below 75 or 80. Um, but apples and pears, you know, I graft them all winter long, either in my basement or in this back room. And I do that January, February, March, uh, into April, as long as I'm, um, you know, getting them done. So, anyway, grafting trees, let me know if you have questions. And, um, thank you very much for watching Twisted Tree Farm.